I didn't think that I was ever going to leave or find a way out. I tried not to think about what was happening to me in the moment. Chelsea was just 16 years old when she was forced into the insidious world of human trafficking right here in Halifax. Promised money and a better life, she didn't realize what was happening until it was too late. Kind of like a prisoner in my body. I just was in survival mode most of the time. Chelsea's real name is protected by a publication ban and Global News has distorted her voice. She says she's sharing her story to put a face to human trafficking in Nova Scotia and let others know they're not alone. I think it's important that you realize that this could happen to your child. This could happen to anybody's child. It doesn't matter where you grew up, where you come from, how much money you have. This happens to so many girls that don't get to share their story or don't want to. According to Statistics Canada, Nova Scotia has the highest reported rates of human trafficking in the country, but so many cases go unreported, and even when they are, prosecution is no guarantee. And I told police what was going on, and they kept repeating back to me, there is nothing we can do until she's willing to come forward, there is nothing we can do. Between 2015 and 2016, Chelsea's mother fought hard for her daughter's case to be taken seriously, afraid that one day she'd get the phone call every parent dreads the most. After months of harrowing abuse, Chelsea escaped with help from her mother, and they stood trial to help put her traffickers behind bars. But today, Chelsea says she's the one who feels like a prisoner. I'm the person who is stuck living this situation and having to look over my shoulder and worry about where I go and what I do when they're the ones who committed the crime. One of her traffickers, Kyle Pello, is out on statutory release. In 2018, he pleaded guilty to charges in Chelsea's case and was sentenced to six years in prison. He was granted day parole in 2019 and released in May of 2020. Renee Weber was also convicted of trafficking in 2018, but her conviction was overturned in April, so the charges haven't been proven conclusively. A new trial was ordered and Weber is out on release conditions. That means Chelsea and her mother have to relive the nightmare of testifying, all while worrying they might bump into Pello or Weber at a Halifax area grocery store. It's hard to relive the same story and tell it over and over again and have a defense lawyer break down my character and make me feel like I deserved what happened to me. It hurts my heart to know that she has to relive it all over again. As they prepare to go back to court next April, they're calling for better support for sexual violence survivors and their families. They also want more training for defense lawyers who cross victims on the stand and for the term sex work to be removed from human trafficking court cases. Elizabeth McSheffrey, Global News, Halifax. Pamela Rubin is a sexual violence trauma therapist who has worked with dozens and dozens of victims of human trafficking in Nova Scotia. What they've lived through is often a combination of rape, domestic violence, coercive control, assault, kidnapping sometimes. But she knows it doesn't end there. Even after they escape, survivors face an uphill healing journey. Sometimes that includes a re-traumatizing court case where their testimony could make or break a trafficker's conviction. So instead of putting victim witnesses in the hot seat and pinning uh, the whole mechanism on very vulnerable people, these cases need to have the resourcing that murder cases get so investigations and evidence collection can occur without victim witnesses. It's one of many flaws advocates have identified in the way our justice system handles human trafficking cases, a system that nationwide sees 89% of human trafficking charges stayed, withdrawn, dismissed or discharged, according to the latest figures from Statistics Canada. Advocates and survivors have also hurled criticism at police services for failing to aggressively pursue not just the traffickers, but the buyers. Well, human trafficking is a supply and demand. If we cut the demand, then the human traffickers aren't going to make any money because that's how human traffickers exist. 
Nova Scotia RCMP and Halifax Regional Police did not make anyone available for interviews on this story. The Provincial Justice Department also declined a request to interview victim services, which supports human trafficking survivors through the court process. We're continuing to add resources and, and support for uh, the victims of human trafficking, and, and this is uh, an important area that uh, we have uh, work to do to improve. The department has added specialized human trafficking victim services navigators for extra support, but the cap on the criminal injuries counseling program has stayed at $2,000 provided for a two-year period. Not enough, says this mother, who will go to court for a second time in her daughter's trafficking case next year. I was denied in an email, told that I couldn't receive any more funding, that I reached my limit, but that I could take my daughter's funding and use it towards myself, and I refused to do that. Outside the court system, there are a handful of provincial programs supporting sexual violence survivors and youth at risk, but advocates say human trafficking is the result of buyer demand, and the minister responsible for the status of women says she's not sure how her department can crack down on that. Uh, I don't know that we've gone to that, that point yet, uh, but certainly we are focused on uh, letting people know what to watch out for, uh, but that's a really good point. Nova Scotia has the highest reported human trafficking rates in Canada, and advocates say profound socioeconomic and cultural change is needed for those numbers to come down. We remain impoverished relative to other parts of the nation. The lack of caring about life for young people, for rural people, all those things feed into trafficking. You know, the men that, that know better have to speak out because that men, we, the research shows that if men challenge other men, they listen. Until then, Pamela Rubin will have her hands full as she supports survivors on the road to recovery. Elizabeth McSheffrey, Global News, Halifax.